Hi everyone, this is Grace and I'm serving as a Lakes Region Conservation Corps member at the Squam Lakes Association. Today we're going to talk about how Squam Lake, along with many other New Hampshire lakes, was formed thousands of years ago. That is me on the right with my cousins and sister at the top of Rattlesnake when we were little. I discovered a love for this area many years ago and I've been lucky enough to find a way to be here for a year. Since those early years, I've hiked up Rattlesnake many times, both for trail work for the SLA and for fun with friends who come to visit. Although I've looked over the lake from that rocky outcrop many times, I still feel amazed when I take in that view. Part of that amazement is due to the undeniable beauty of that spot, but another big part of that amazement comes from imagining the massive forces that created this lake thousands of years ago. Squam Lake, along with most of the lakes in New Hampshire, was formed by glacial activity. Glacial activity is a term that doesn't quite capture the jaw-dropping natural forces that were at play here. 15,000 years ago, this spot was covered by an ice sheet called the Laurentide Ice Sheet during the last ice age. An ice sheet, or continental glacier, is a sheet of ice that is larger than 50,000 kilometers squared. There are two ice sheets on Earth today, the Greenland Ice Sheet and the Antarctic Ice Sheet. At its full extent, the Laurentide Ice Sheet covered most of Canada and much of the northern United States. In some places, the Laurentide Ice Sheet was a mile thick. Think about that for a second. A mile thick. To put that in perspective, I've put my minimal graphic design skills to the test to make this handy graphic for you. A glacier a mile thick is as tall as 15 football fields. It's also as tall as 176 school buses, but I was making this in PowerPoint and that would have taken way too long. This brown lump represents West Rattlesnake. Look at that. It is completely dwarfed by the giant ice sheet that covered this spot thousands of years ago. The conclusion? Pure awe. This thing was massive. Alright, so now that we are sufficiently in awe of the Laurentide ice sheet, we can talk about how the glacier formed this lake. As a glacier moves across a landscape, its massive weight carves the earth below. It scrapes against the ground and pulls up rocks and sand and sediment. This creates an abrasive sludge along the bottom of the glacier that tears up the ground beneath. Some of the depressions and basins that the glacier carves will later become our lakes. If you think a glacier might have been in your area once, but you aren't sure, there are a few distinctive clues that you can look for. The first clues are glacial striations. These are long gouges you find where the glacier came into contact with the bedrock and scratched it up as the glacier, glacier flowed south. You can also look for glacial erratics. These are large boulders that the glacier picked up, transported, and left behind in a new spot as the glacier receded. Perhaps the most famous glacial erratic is the Madison Boulder in Madison, New Hampshire. This is the largest known glacial, glacial erratic in North America. We can find a lot of these on many of our favorite hikes in the Squam region. Chamberlain Reynolds, Belknap Woods, and the Morgan Percival Loop are examples of just a handful. Keep an eye out for them next time you go hiking. The lakes and mountains that we love seem so immortal to us now, but just a blink of an eye ago in geologic time, this landscape looked nothing like it does now. One of my favorite things in the world is gaining a new perspective on something that I think I'm familiar with, and I hope that learning the origin stories of these lakes has provided a new perspective to some of you today. In the next section of this video, I will be demonstrating an activity that will help you visualize how glaciers shape the landscape. Detailed instructions are included in the post. If you're hiking in the Squam area and you find yourself thinking about glaciers, take a picture and share it with us on social media using the hashtag, hashtag ShareLearnAdventure. Stay tuned for the next ShareLearnAdventure post and check out past posts at squamlakes.org. Today we're going to do an activity to help you visualize how a glacier affects the landscape. All you need is Play-Doh, ice, and some rocks or sand. And I don't have Play-Doh right now and I don't want to go out and get some. And I discovered that you can make it pretty easily. I real People have told me that I kind of missed a childhood milestone since I've never done it before. So most of you have probably made it. But just in case you haven't, all you need is flour, salt, and water. Um, and you take a cup of flour, half a cup of salt, and half a cup of water and mix that up and you should get and really knead it together and it should turn into a play-doh like consistency all right so here is the finished play-doh this will be your land mass you can 
dye it with food coloring if you want to. The next part you need is the glacier. So I didn't, I don't have ice cube trays, so I just put the water in cups. And so what you want to do first is gather some rocks. Um, it could be from outside, aquarium rocks, anything you can find, and some sand. Put it in the bottom, fill up the cup with water, and freeze it. And then you want to take it out about 10 minutes before you actually want to do the activity to let it melt a little bit. So I have this glacier that has been melting for a while. You can see all the rocks at the bottom. That represents all the rocks it's picked up from the bedrock as it's dragged across the surface of the land. So we'll put it here. We'll pretend this is the Laurentide ice sheet moving across New England. And you just want to kind of push it slowly. Don't push it super hard into the earth and just keep sliding it all the way down. And then you can look at what your glacier did to your landscape. So you can see all of these divots on the scale of a glacier, those could become lakes, they could have formed extra mountains. And you see the stones that came out of the bottom, those would be your glacial erratics. So the big boulders that you see that seems sort of out of place if you're on a trail, those are most likely deposited by a glacier. So that's the activity. The more detailed instructions will be in the post if you wanna look at and read those. Good luck. That is all I have for you today. If you do this activity, make sure to take a picture and tag us on social media with the hashtag ShareLearnAdventure and keep an eye out for future posts on our website, squadlinks.org.